What's going on? It's toned up. So I got a few lawnmowers in my yard, but in the back backyard, you know, the ground's not even, and there's like rocks and whatever back there. And so I got a motor, and I got some, you know, chassis for lawn, riding lawnmower. So I'm thinking, hey, let's go and put one together and see if it works or not, so I can use it. In the backyard, and I don't care if it get damaged or destroyed, because you know, gonna be a throw a throwaway lawnmower anyway. If it works, you know, I can use it. And like cutting this kind of grass back here, the tall, and it, I got like stuff everywhere, and they get banged up, it get banged up. So that pretty much it. So that's today's build, and got myself a motor. Let's go ahead and uh, find a chassis for it, and see if we can make it work. So this is actually a rolling chassis. So only thing missing from it is an engine, which I have in the uh, truck bed, and maybe a battery. And uh, let's go and hook a chain to it and get it back to my uh, garage, and so we can work on this project. Let's go ahead and remove the uh, intake manifold along with the carburetor. Uh, just uh, check all your linkages, make sure you know how to put it back together. Take pictures if you need to. Every time you have a motor just sitting around, what happens to the gasoline, it become uh, like gunked up, become like a varnish and just clog everything up in there, include all the jets. Um, in this case, um, I can't even turn the choke or the throttle level because everything is seized up in there. I don't know how long the engine been uh, sitting around, so it's, it's bad. I don't know how old the gas is in there, but it smells very bad. There are four bolts total two on each side holding the intake manifold to the engine. I believe the bolt size is uh, eight millimeter. So the goal for this build is to spend as little money as possible. So I hope everything that you know attaches this engine that I could fix without buying any parts for it. There are five bolts holding the metal cover on, including the one attached to the uh, dipstick. Let's go ahead and remove the uh, metal cover and see what we got underneath here. So there was a mouse nest over here. You can see everything is rusted. It's not a big deal as long as everything works. So far, the appearance of the ignition coil, it does not look good. Let's go ahead and remove it and get a better inspection. I hope somehow, I mean, it's still good as you can use it without buying a new one. Let's go ahead and uh, turn the motor and I hope uh, it's not seized up. So far it's turning okay, but I do need to do a compression check on both cylinder.
I'm just going to bend the metal shroud up a little bit to get the uh, ignition coil cable out. The coil itself, there's no crack. It looks pretty good, but the uh, the metal is rusted and those layer of metal so I guess is uh, swelled up a little bit. There are two bolts securing the uh, carburetor to the intake manifold. I went and took it apart. Now I just got the carburetor and let's go ahead and uh, clean everything up and do a close inspection see if I can still salvage this uh, carburetor. This is the old gas from the carburetor. I mean it's, it's like destroying my glove and it's burning my hand right now. It smells pretty bad. I cleaned as much as I could on the outside. Let's go and tear this thing apart and see how bad it's on the inside. I went ahead and uh, scraped up as much of those gunks uh, which stuck onto the uh, to choke plate. So beside removing all the gunk from the carburetor. Um, I went ahead and uh, you know using the carburetor cleaner with the straw do any inlet and outlet and make sure nothing is clogged there and uh, when you spray something in one end it should come out the other end so far I don't have any uh, jets or any inlet or outlet being clogged up so that's a good sign The next step is uh, to check the diaphragm, make sure nothing is tear and everything is uh, still in working order. The diaphragm, there's no tear in it and uh, it's not deformed, so I can reuse it. If needed, you can order this diaphragm online for pretty cheap. This choke plate is held together by one screw. Once you remove the choke plate, this allows you to uh, slide out the choke lever. And this one is stuck in there pretty good. The gasoline sat around for so long it turned into varnish and it's kicked onto the uh, choke lever stem and, uh, and that's why I couldn't turn the lever because it's, uh, it hardened up in there but uh, it's not that hard to scrape it off with the uh, razor blade
So after cleaning the uh, brass float, um, there was like holes in it caused by the uh, bad gas. So what I'm trying to do is repair it. So I'm adding a little flux to all those spots. I'm gonna put some solder on. Hopefully this will seal the holes. It's not a pretty repair, but hopefully that will do the job. Just doing a test fit, make sure the solder does not interfere with you know, how it fits in there. Make sure to connect the uh, plunger to the bottom of the float. There's like a metal wire right there that actually attaches to the float. After that part is done, go ahead and insert the, uh, the hinge pin into the slots. Let's go ahead and reinstall the uh, choke plate and that pretty much it. The carburetor has been rebuilt and it seems like everything is in working order. I uh, won't find out until I overhaul the uh, motor. So I hope this helped you fix your carburetor in your 18 horse uh, Briggs and Stratton uh, V-twin engine. So thank you for watching and also if you are uh, new to my channel, uh, please subscribe. You will get the alerts uh, on my next videos when they come out.